Tell me you think it started to grow. But it hasn't. Just in case he doesn't look at it properly. Judy. Sorry. Have it. Then grow out of it. Bad? Not really. Judy Walsh. I need to see a doctor right away. Mr. Boyce, hello again. Look, we're fairly busy. What's the problem? Are you a doctor? Now you know I'm not. I could see him. Andrew Wilson? Uh, no, sorry. Dr. Dempsey's busy all the way through today. I'm sorry. What, even for emergencies? Well, it would help if I knew what the emergency was. I'm a bit puffy. Around the ankles, mainly, and just sort of generally tired. I know that's not terribly helpful. Not at all. We're getting there. Now, just look straight ahead, please. That's it. Hmm. What about headaches? Yes, lots. And I feel sick, too. Not enough to vomit, but it's almost all the time now. You're an output? Um, don't seem to go as much as I used to. But I'm probably just imagining that. You know what it's like when you think you're sick, you decide everything's gone wrong. No, I don't think that's the case here. What about pruritus, uh, itching? Um, yes, now I think of it. I wish you'd stop mentioning things. I keep answering yes. Well, it's not a test. It is in a way. I can't afford to get sick. I've got an eight-year-old kid to support. Must keep you going. <sighs> yes, he does. And my brother's still a student, so he can't manage on his own. Any history of urinary tract infections? Um, I don't think so. I had cystitis a few years ago, but that's all. What about your family? Any history of kidney disease? I don't think so. But I don't really know. Both my parents died more than 10 years ago. Car crash. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's a long time ago. So what do you think's wrong? I'd like to have a urine sample. Yeah, you wouldn't credit how it happened. Someone must have moved the pallet. Not me, I'm always careful. There could be compo on this, so you've got to get me checked out. Patrick Walsh? Uh, this bloke told me that there's hundreds of bones in each foot. Well, who knows how many of them are broken? Perhaps bruised. I think it's unlikely that any of them are broken. What, so you're not even going to bother checking me out? No, of course I'll have a look. But I'm afraid you really will have to wait your turn. Julie? Uh, yeah, why don't you take a seat? Because if those bones are broken, then you're not doing them any good by standing on them. <laughs> There's no need to be sarcastic. They're my bones. I wouldn't know whether they're broken or not. Oh, it's my feet, it's my head. Help. Oh. Sorry, mate. So, so what's the verdict? No, I'm not absolutely sure yet, but your urine sample shows traces of albumin and blood. And that's not good, right? No, it's not. I know you want specific answers, of course you do, but I'm afraid you're going to have to be patient for a little while longer. You free this afternoon? Not really. I suppose I can be, seeing I've taken the morning off. Well, I want to arrange an ultrasound for you at the renal unit at St John's. Can it wait? I'm not trying to be difficult, it's just that my family depends on me. I can't just not be there when I feel like it. Well, if you did it this afternoon, I could probably have an answer for you by tomorrow. I know it seems overwhelming, but it's really a fairly simple procedure, and the sooner we have an act for you and the family. Not necessarily. So, what does Dr. Harrison say about me? Hypochondriac? She'll be put down immediately? <laughs> Nothing so interesting. Flu, chicken pox. Yeah, well, I live with my eight-year-old nephew. It means I get everything that's going around. Measles, chicken pox, honey banana sandwiches. Oh, from memory, that combination tastes pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, it beats Vegemite and lettuce. Oh, anything does. <laughs> well, if you'd like to get your shirt off, I'll have a look at that mole. <laughs> well, to be honest, I'm probably just wasting time. My sister's in seeing Mr. Sharp, and well, she sort of talked me into it. Well, it's better to get it checked out than ignore it, especially when it's somewhere inaccessible, like on your back. Yeah, down there, can you see? Mm-hmm. So what do you reckon? Freckle? I don't think so. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Mr. Boyce. He's collapsed. Excuse me. Sure. 
Sure. Ambulance, Julie. Oh, Could everyone please stand back? The yeah, ambulance, please. Ken, it's Julie, Ross Street Surgery. We've got an unconscious male. Yeah, Dr. Dempsey's with him now as soon as you can. Okay, bye. Hang on, Mr. Boyce. You'll be all right. Could you move back, please? Out of the way. Please, thank you. There you go. Heart attack? No, it's obviously some sort of stroke. Ambulance on the way? Yeah, it's on the way. Yeah. Sorry about that. Is it going to be okay? I certainly hope so. A bit scary. It was. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't like you looked sick or anything. All the same. Okay, I know this is taking forever, but uh, you take your shirt off and we'll have a look at that mole again. Well, it's still there. I thought it might be. Has it grown any larger at all? No. Bleeding? A bit. There was some blood on my t-shirt, according to my sister. Family watchdog. <laughs> and a few other things, starting with Sergeant Major. Hey, don't blame yourself. I thought you were a hero. I've already taken the morning off. How can I take the whole day? And what about Max? That's I don't think I'm going to be through in time to pick him up from school. Then I will. Now, that's my job. You've got lectures. I don't want you to miss any. It's not your job. It's our job. And if you knew how boring lectures are, you wouldn't be in such a hurry to throw me at them. They're important. Yeah, but so are you. And don't worry about the bookshop. I'll ring them. They'll understand. Thanks. No, oh, it's a tough job. Someone's got to do it. Yes, of course. I'll be more than glad to take the mole off, if you'd rather not. Is there a problem? No, it's just that, um, well, it's not because of what happened this morning, is it, uh, Mr. Boyce? It didn't help. Brain hemorrhage could have happened any time, even while he was watching television. Yeah, but it happened in the surgery, and I hardly gave him a second glance. Because he didn't present with any symptoms. No, I guess so. Anyway, it seems like he's going to be all right. I checked. Well, there you are. You can forget about him. And you can forget any notions you have of responsibility. I'll try. But I still would prefer it if you'd remove them all. I think your expertise would be useful. You worried about malignancy? Oh, it seems unlikely. But it would be better if it was off. So can you do it? Yes, I can probably schedule him in the next day or two. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. And I'm glad you're not having any doubts about your competence, because I'm not. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I'd like you to give some thought to your long-term future here with us, uh, including the possibilities of a partnership, perhaps? <laughs> Seriously? Well, sometime in the future. Uh, anyway, think about it. Well, I'm <laughs> flattered, but... <laughs> well, what? Well, apart from any reservations I might have, are you absolutely sure that you want me? We haven't known each other all that long. Well, I think I know all I need to know, which is that I'd like to keep you. Anyway, give it some thought. Him. Y fronts. Yep, Y fronts. Big, baggy white ones. With holes in them? Oh, sure, a lot. What about her? Don't know Miss Pink Bloom is. Down to her knees. Plain or Pat? Plain, I think. What do you reckon? No, come on, she'll go. Patterned with hundreds of Homer Simpsons all over the. <laughs> You're making that up. I'm allowed. It's my go. <laughs> oh, come on, there's Mum. Oh! <laughs> Hi, Mum. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. You've been waiting long? Hardly at all. How'd you go? OK, I guess. Actually, I don't really know. I have to get the results from Mr Sharp. So? Tomorrow, I hope. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm just not going to think about it. How does pizza sound for tea? I get to pick. You always get to pick. Nah, not for me. I'm going out. Who with? Oh, just someone. Just want a date and some of your friends. <laughs> Both, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> 
Come on, tell us. Who is it? You're being boring. It's none of our business. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And it's bad luck to say too much, but if it develops, I promise I'll tell you both. <laughs> Cow's over here. Right. G-string. <laughs> Sorry, I got held up. You been waiting long? Uh, not long enough to get anxious. Good. So, so, so I hope you've made some plans because I haven't made any. Well, uh, we could eat, but well, it's a little early. And at the risk of stating the obvious, go west the beach. When in doubt, try the scenery. <laughs> oh, come on, yeah. At least he's going to be all right. Yeah, but it's a good lesson. Don't judge people. They make snap assumptions. If they say this, if they leave it. Yeah, but if they're hypochondriacs. <laughs> well, even hypochondriacs get sick. Oh, well, you can have them. I think I'll stick to engineering. Well, that's if Judy doesn't mind keeping on paying the bills. She sounds pretty good. Yeah, she is. She was only 18 when she had to take over from Mum and Dad. And she's never winced about it once. So, do you share with anyone? William. Mr. Sharp, above the surgery. <laughs> William's okay, don't judge him too fast. Bit like living with your grandfather? <laughs> Trust me, he's a good bloke. So, what's he like about you bringing guys home? Well, I haven't crossed that one yet. He does know you're gay. I don't know. I don't think so. I was kind of hoping he might pick up on it by himself. Then why don't you just tell him? I will. When? Oh, I'm not exactly hiding it. I'm just waiting for an opportune moment. Now that's a cop out. You're for confrontation, eh? No, just honesty. Well, I would be too if I thought it achieved anything. But experience tells me the softly, softly approach works better. Well, I don't think you've got any real dilemma. He brings women home, you bring men. What have you found? Just a shell. Now, if I get bitten by a blue ringed octopus, can I rely on you knowing what to do? Are you kidding? I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> you waiting up for me? No. Not saying I'm up. Did you have a good time? Yeah, I did. <sighs> so, if you're not waiting for me, what are you still doing up? No reason. Yes, there is. You scared about the tests? Not really. A bit. A lot? I wish you'd tell me. It's not fair otherwise. I'm afraid of what'll happen if the tests are bad. Nothing will happen. You'll deal with it, that's all. Like you always do. Morning. Coffee. Like that, is it? I don't know. Can't tell, I haven't woken up yet. Well, as long as it was worth it, was it? I think so. It's a bit early to tell. Go anywhere interesting? Oh, no, not really. Just a small restaurant, nothing special. You can't always bring people home, you know. I wouldn't intrude. I know. How can my kidneys just pack up like that? Glomo... What was it? Glomerulo nephritis. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but I've written down the relevant details, and perhaps after you've had time to absorb them, you might like to question me further. I'm very sick, aren't I? Yes, but we can stabilize that. But first, I'd like you to return to the hospital for a biopsy, just so we can confirm the diagnosis and prepare you for dialysis. What now? Ideally, within the next 24 hours. How long for? About a week. What happens if I just say no? Judy, you can't. 
I suppose if it was absolutely necessary, you could put it off for a few days, but if you just leave it, you'll get sicker and sicker, and that's not in anybody's interests, particularly yours. I'm sorry. I know I'm being childish. No, 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 just apprehensive, not the same thing at all. It's just that I've never really been sick before. I was hoping you'd give me a couple of pills and tell me to have an early night. I wish that had been the case. Well, I, I guess I can arrange to be in hospital by tomorrow. Dialysis, is that painful? No, no, hardly at all. I suppose the worst you could say for it is that it's um, inconvenient. Well, I guess it's not the end of the world. How long do I have to do it for? Till I'm cured or what? No, there's no cure. You'll have to stay on dialysis until the kidney becomes available for transplant. But can't they do anything? I don't know, fix it, whatever. Apparently not. You don't look so miserable, I'll deal with it. It's not like it's cancer or anything like that. Still. Anyway, it looks like I can go on a waiting list for a transplant almost straight away, so who knows, I might not have to wait all that long. Oh, sure, what, like 10 years? You're just guessing, it might not be anything like that long. And it won't be. You can have mine. Well, one of them. No, that's not an option. <laughs> of course it is. It's the best one, the most obvious one. No, I can't let you do it. Why not? You'd do it for me. And don't say you wouldn't because we both know you would. It's too big a sacrifice. I don't want you to make it. Listen, I've been taking from you for years and nothing I did for you would ever make up for it. You can't just say, here's a kidney, help yourself. Yes, I can. Patrick. I'm really grateful for the offer, but I'm not going to change my mind about it, so please don't bring it up again. Well, at least see if we're compatible. Patrick, stop it, because it is not going to happen. You can't always be in control. Would it hurt you just this once to take something from me? Don't you dare. That's emotional blackmail. No, it's not. It's a fair question. And it's something I really want to do for you. Well, you can't. Julie, is Tessa free? Uh, you've got about 10 minutes. That'll do, thanks. If only I were 10 years younger. Oh, Julie, if you were 10 years younger, he'd be 17. That's OK, I can be flexible. And below the age of consent? Grow a brainy and it's only a fantasy. Oh. Gay. Yep. I thought you probably were, but I didn't say anything because if I was wrong either way, you might be offended. <laughs> well, you were right. Is there a prize? Sorry? Well, I I'm glad you told me, because it saves me putting my foot in it. But, uh, why are you telling me? Oh, you mean, why the big statement? Well, yes. Because I need to know your opinion. I need to know whether you think William's worked it out. Well, he could have, but knowing William, I very much doubt it. Why? Because if he hasn't, I feel I owe it to him to tell him. Is it any of his business? I mean, it's not as if you're planning to come to work in drag. Are you? Not since the dry cleaner ruined my only good frock. <laughs> no, I really do feel like I owe it to him to tell him. Especially since we're sharing the house. And now he's even mentioned the possibility of a partnership. Has he really? Yeah. I see. Is there a problem? No, not for you anyway. Well, the thing is I don't know how to broach it. Or whether in fact it makes any difference to the offer. You want an honest answer? Please. William is as homophobic as the average middle-class heterosexual male of a certain age. I think it might well make a difference. Mm, that was my feeling. But you're right, you have to tell him. Wouldn't be fair otherwise. Hmm. Try and keep it dry until the stitches come out. Mm. I know it's a nuisance, but it's best to be careful. Mm. And stay out of the sun. That's very important. You finished? Yes, you can get dressed now. Actually, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you about. My sister, Judy. Oh, yes? How do I go about donating a kidney to her? Well, that's a rather long and complicated process. Are you absolutely sure? I am, but she's not. It says it's too big a sacrifice, that sort of thing. Well, it's certainly not something to be undertaken lightly. <laughs> well, it is when she's your only sister and there's a good possibility you're the only option she's going to have. She's so used to worrying about me. Doesn't like having the tables turned. If she doesn't agree. 
Well, that's just the thing. I'm pretty sure I can eventually talk her around, but... Well, I don't want to go through all that, get her hopes up if it turns out we're not compatible. It's all right. As long as you realise that uh, it's not a question of just a simple blood match. It's a major operation. Yeah, at this stage, I just want to see if we've got compatible blood types. Just as a first step. Well, in that case, you better roll up your sleeve. That's the one. Thanks. William's been in a good mood the last few weeks. It must be living with you. I can't think what else it could be. You think I've been a good influence, do you? I think you must be. In what way? That's fishing. Come in. Oh, hi, I'll it's be It's all up. right, Julie. Right, OK, well, I'd better get back to work. Looks like I've got some competition. Yeah, you better watch yourself. <laughs> so aren't you going to ask me about my mole? How's your mole? It's gone. Now that's out of the way, what are you doing after work? Nothing. Ah, oh, good. You are now. Look out for the tree! <laughs> He's a total klutz! <laughs> so, have you told William yet? Well, I probably should have. But when it comes to the crunch, it's just not that easy. Sure it is. You just go up to him and you say, William, there's something I forgot to tell you. I'm a faggot. <laughs> oh, that's a great approach. <laughs> OK, well then, lead him in gently. Try an in-depth discussion on the ancient Greeks. Or, if he's religious, try the Song of Solomon. Look, it's a lot simpler for you. You never had to come out because you were never in in the first place. And your sister's obviously fine about it. Yeah, well, why wouldn't she be? And lots of people aren't. Yeah, I know. Shitful, isn't it? Anyway, all I'm saying is I'm trying to achieve an end. There's no point in blowing it by choosing the wrong means. Yeah, well, one way or another, you've still got to tell him. Don't nag. <laughs> OK. I won't mention it again. For at least five minutes. <laughs> Not yet, I'll tell you when. See, the timing is crucial. OK. Start running now. Oh, sure. Crucial. Are you working later than usual? Well, I'm on my way home now. Yes, of course. I expect the children will be waiting for you. No more than for Ian. Oh, waiting for you both, then. In fact, at their age, from their point of view, the less they see of either of us, the better. I'm sure that's not the case. I know kids are much more independent these days, but still, they never really grow out of needing their mother. Mine have. I believe you've offered Martin a partnership. Sometime in the future, perhaps. I thought you approved of him. I do. I'm just wondering why you didn't make the same offer to me. But you don't want one. How do you know? Because you made it very clear from the moment you joined us that you only wanted to work certain hours and no more. You know, I hesitate to mention this, given the foul mood you're in, but you said that you had ongoing family commitment. That was two years ago. The family isn't static, neither am I. Yes, but you still have three children, haven't you? You know I do. Yes, yeah, well, I really don't know what to say to you, Tessa. Especially as anything I do say is likely to be construed as yet another example of my old-fashioned patriarchal attitude. Just tell me one thing. Was your assumption about how I'd react the only reason you didn't ask me first? Well, of course it was. Tessa, I value you very highly. You must know that by now. Sometimes the signals don't come through. Anyway, if you'll excuse me, I must go home to those family commitments. So, what do you think? Better the way it is or even shorter? Um. I don't know. Uh, why not be daring go for shorter? You think? I asked Martin what he thought and he likes it the way it is. I'd give up on Martin if I were you. Ready? Yes. Good, let's go. She's had a long day. So have I. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes of course, Julie. Well, well, good night. See you tomorrow. It was very windy, but then Martin had to go. And he got it to fly. Martin? Patrick's new boyfriend. You know, the one he sort of told us about. He's just a friend at this stage. Uh-huh. Sounds like you had fun. Yeah. Well, now that you're back, you can go and get washed up. Okay. Hey, and while you're at it, you can clean out your school bag. I can smell yesterday's sandwich from here. Okay. Come on. 
Listen, uh, Judy, I've been thinking about your kidneys. You too. About you finding a donor. I know what you said before, but... Well, while I was getting my mole cut off, I got Mr. Sharp to run and check on my blood group. I know we need to do a lot more than that before we can go ahead, but as it turns out, I'm B negative. Same as you. So there's a very good possibility I'm a compatible donor. But I don't want you to be. I told you that. Yeah, I know, but it's crazy. If I'm compatible and I'm willing, what more can you want? I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. And I know you mean well, but I resent you trying to make decisions about my life behind my back. I don't understand why you feel this way. You don't have to understand. It's my life, I can make whatever decisions I like. All right. But if you ever feel differently about it, the offer's still there. Thank you, I mean that. Oh, just one other thing. It's no big deal, but could you just check with me before you take Max out with your friends? Um, why? He's getting older, he's starting to become aware of things. So? I just want you to take that on board, that's all. You're not suggesting I'd let anything happen to him? No, of course not. Judy, if you've got a problem with something, I think you ought to tell me. I haven't got a problem, but I'm his mother and I'm entitled to know who he's with. Well, this afternoon, he was with a couple of poofters. And surprising as it may seem, neither of them showed the slightest tendency to molest him. Stop it, Patrick. I didn't say that and I didn't suggest it. No, but you're suggesting something. I just want some control over his influences. I want some say in how he turns out. What, like you did with me? Or is that just some awful mistake you'd rather not repeat? Stop it, Patrick. You're being stupid. Has me being gay got anything to do with you not wanting me as a donor? No. Has it? No. I see. I don't know. It's complicated. No, it's not complicated. Either there is love and trust and acceptance or there is nothing. That's not fair. You know I love you. Then what about the other two? Ah, oh, there you are. Care to join me? Oh, no thanks. Not at the moment. You do know you don't have to ask, don't you? I, I'd hate you to feel that you had to ask permission. Thanks. Or to behave in any way like a lodger, because I can assure you it's not necessary. I appreciate it. You know, I know I'm a fair bit older than you are, but uh, well, I promise you I am quite broad-minded as far as sex and its um, attendant comings and goings are concerned. Is something wrong? No, I'm fine. Specifically, how broad-minded? Oh, very broad-minded. You're not into bondage and such, are you? No, no, nothing like that. Oh, good. You know, I've never been able to understand this desire to inflict pain. Apart from anything else, it must be so painful. I think that's the idea. <laughs> yes, of course. No, it's not that. What it is, is I'm gay. Gay? Homosexual? Yes, yes, I know what it means. So, last night... A man. Right. Well... I don't see any problem with that. Do you? No. Good. Well, it's settled then. William. Isn't it? William, I'm finding this quite hard enough as it is. But if you insist on being politically correct instead of honest, I'm going to find it impossible. You do mind, don't you? Well, um... It's not that I'm apologising for what I am, but you shouldn't have to either. So if it's an issue, tell me. Perhaps a little bit of an issue. Fair enough. What in particular? Can I ask you anything? Anything at all. What's your HIV status? What's yours? Negative, of course. You did say I could ask anything. I'm sorry. It was just unexpected. So was your declaration. You see, it is something I have to consider as far as the practice and the patients are concerned. Well, I'm negative, and I have regular checkups. 
So if that situation ever changed at all, I promise I'd tell you immediately. Why have you taken so long to tell me? Why do you think? <laughs> to avoid this excruciating conversation. Yeah. Though, if you'd have asked, I wouldn't have lied. So, as far as the partnership goes, if you don't feel comfortable about it anymore, I think you should withdraw the offer. I don't see how it would affect the practice. Apart from the gay clientele I might bring in. No, no, no. I've made the offer. I wouldn't dream of withdrawing it. Well, I would like you to think about it for a while. That and also whether you feel comfortable about me living here now that you know. Nothing to think about. I don't know. I'll get it. William, regardless of your decision, I appreciate you being so civilised about this. Sharp surgery? Y yes, yes, he is. Um, just a moment, I'll, I'll fetch him. Martin? Yep? Just coming. It, it, it's a friend. Thanks. Hello? Here I am, preaching openness and honesty. And I've been blind to the fact that the person I'm closest to hates what I am. I even finally realised why she wouldn't listen to my idea of donating a kidney to her. I didn't know you were planning that. That's all it was. Just a plan, just... Just something I wanted to do for her. I thought she said no out of altruism. But what it gets down to is some notion that I'm unclean. Are you sure you're not misreading her? I wish I could just separate the argument. Keep it as something apart. But I can't stop it from colouring everything else. Scratch it straight and find a homophobe. Oh, I can't believe that. But there are lots of different levels. Lots of shades of grey. Is this the voice of age and wisdom? I've probably just been around a bit longer, that's all. So this is how he lives. Oh, you don't have to whisper, he's gone out. To a concert. Interesting taste in art. Oh, I'm leaving him alone. He's more than 60. What sort of taste do you expect him to have? Doesn't really bear thinking about. Then don't. Think about me instead. I'd love to. Oh, good. Perfect timing. How was the concert? Oh, a little disappointing, really. String section wasn't all it might have been, but uh, pleasant enough evening. How about you? I've, um, taken you at your word. Uh, which word? The one about not acting like a lodger? I've brought someone home. Oh, yes, yes, of course you have. Yes. I mean, yes, of course. Perfectly all right. Yeah, yeah heavens, yes. <laughs> it's uh, Patrick Walsh from the surgery. But he's a patient. Of yours? That's um, one of the reasons why I handed him over to you. I see. Coffee? No, 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 no. Thank you, thank you, but uh, uh, no, no, thanks. OK. Thanks. So what did he say about me? Nothing. He was fine. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Lynch. Hello, um... Patrick. Yes, yes, of course. Um, <laughs> well, good night, um, Patrick. <laughs> good night, William.
I don't know how she could have kept it hidden for so long. Must have been a real strain pretending it didn't matter. Well, I don't know. It's not really a strain to hide your prejudices. Because most of the time we don't even know we've got them. She knew. There's no way she couldn't have. Wish I could just build up a hatred for her. Oh, why? What would that achieve? Might make me feel better. Not for a minute. Look, the way I see it, you've got two choices. You can either foam at the mouth a bit and get really angry, and I wouldn't blame you. Or you can try and do something to retrieve the situation. But I didn't cause it. Yeah. Are you prepared to lose her? I don't want to. Then try and do something to change her. I'm not saying that's the way things should be. But you've got to play the cards you're dealt. Not the ones you think you deserve. And what if I don't win? Well, if you don't, you don't. Sometimes I know it's hard to believe, but life does go on. It's not all bad. Hmm? Here we go. Now, can you put that gown on and make sure the tags are on the back? Good. Mrs. Kelly, now you haven't had her before, but she's a genius at turning a mild headache into a half hour consultation. Thanks for the warning. You sound a bit tired. Do you have a late night? I'm afraid so. And you can skip the sympathy. It was self inflicted. Really? Was she anyone special? Actually, she was a he. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. It's not a secret. <laughs> You all right? Yep. <laughs> well, if you don't mind me saying so, it seems a bit of a waste. Not from my point of view. I wasn't speaking from your point of view. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. William. Mm. <clears throat> did you, uh, did you know about Martin? What about him? Well, that he's, um, he's, uh, you know. No, I don't know. And even if I did know, quite frankly, I'm sick to death of hearing about it. Well, well, what I'd like to know is when did the love that dare not speak its name become the love that wouldn't shut up for five minutes? No idea. Why we blinked, I suppose. Not that I'm prejudiced. No one could say that I'm prejudiced. I am. No, no, of course you're not. Just a little bit. No, I wouldn't say that. You don't have to. I already did. Oh, well, you're wrong. You're not. I was stupid, Ian. You're not me. I am. I'm the one who ought to know what I feel, which happens to be a certain degree of prejudice. The difficulty is that 20 or 10 or even five years ago, I was quite comfortable with that prejudice. No, I'm not. Well, would it make you more comfortable if you, if you thought of it as a, as a considered opinion rather than a prejudice? No. Well, it's my own fault, I suppose. None of it would have come up if I'd offered the partnership to Tessa first. Why didn't you? Don't you start. Hey, Max. Over here. Sorry, I'm late. You been waiting long? Nah. You liar. Come on. Cars up here. Anything exciting happen today? No. Normal day, huh? Yeah. Are your mum fighting? Yeah, a bit. Why? It's um, it's complicated, Max. You mean I'm not old enough, right? Yeah, sorry, mate. But I will tell you one thing: no matter what happens between me and your mum, nothing will change you and me. Promise? You bet. I don't like when you to fight. No, neither do I. Let's go and see your mum's new machine. Okay. Does it hurt? No, it's okay. Looks kind of yuck. I guess it does, kind of. But it doesn't feel yuck. Hey, Max, you know that shop out the front? Why don't you go and get us some chocolate? Okay.
Sorry I wasn't here for the biopsy. How'd it go? Got me hooked up to this, didn't it? So I confirmed the diagnosis. I don't blame you for not coming. I said stuff. I didn't mean half of it. Then let's talk about the half you did mean. Can't we just pretend it never happened? We could. But if that's what you want, I can't guarantee to be around very much longer. What do you want to talk about? The fact that you mind my being gay. You do, don't you? I don't. It's just that I've been wondering lately, I suppose because of Max, whether somehow it's because of the way I brought you up. What? Well, I don't know. It could be, couldn't it? <laughs> I'm gay because that's the way I am and always have been. It's got nothing to do with you, so stop feeling guilty about it. But it can happen that way. You don't know for sure that it's genetic. I mean, what about... Men in prisons and boys in boarding schools. I can't believe that environment has nothing to do with it. Don't you get it? I was born this way. I'm just trying to work out the reasons for things, that's all. And to make sure that as far as Max is concerned, you don't make the same mistake. I've never had anyone show me what to do. How do I know I'm doing it right? Stop feeling responsible for everything. Things aren't gonna happen just because you think they should. Well, maybe it doesn't matter to you, but I want my children to have children. I want a sense of things going on, stretching past where I can see. And that'll make you feel safe, will it? Yes. And I hope you get your wish. I would never, ever do anything to try and change Max's sexuality. I can't believe you'd even begin to think that of me. I don't. You're twisting it. And even if I could, which I can't, I wouldn't want to. Because as far as I'm concerned, whatever he is, is fine. I guess that puts us in total opposition. I only want him to be happy. And you think gays can't be? Oh, maybe you're right. It is pretty hard to be happy when you're bracketed into some... some poofter compartment which negates everything else that's true about you. Yes. It's the only reason you won't accept my kidney, isn't it? I'm sorry. It's a stupid time to be talking about this. No, I'm sorry. You said I've given you a lot. There's something not very generous about somebody who won't take it in return. Don't agree to the transplant. Not if it's just a gesture. I know. It's not. It's not that I was interested. It's just that, well, apart from Martin, there's no one else around here worth looking at. Oh, I don't know. There's always William. What about William? Doesn't bear thinking about. See ya. Bye. I missed something. Nothing important. Hmm. Uh, yes, Aaron. Mm -hmm. I can only reiterate that I didn't ask you before because I assumed the answer would be no, but would you be interested in a partnership, say, 25%? Yeah, I could be. Hmm. But what about Martin? Completely separate issue. So, what do you say? Are you interested? Enough to give it some thought, but you shouldn't get your hopes up too high. Because I'm probably going to say yes. Now, don't get too excited. It's just going to be hamburgers. 
fine by me. Followed by cake. It's, uh, it's kind of a double celebration. Not only are things fine between Jude and me, but she's also decided to accept my, uh, my kidney. <laughs> Wish I could say that word without thinking of steak and kidney pie. <laughs> Never gonna be able to eat it again. <laughs> What's the matter? You can't donate it. They won't let you. Uh, who won't let me? I did some checking after you mentioned it. The transplant unit won't accept organ donations from sexually active gay men. No, you must have it wrong. William didn't say anything about it. Well, maybe he didn't know, I didn't. And anyway, he probably didn't realise you were gay until last night. So what if I am? I'm clean, I've got no diseases. I practice safe sex. I'll do any checks they want. They're still unlikely to do it. From their point of view, it's an added risk factor and they're not keen on taking it. But if Judy's They still won't. I'm sorry. Look, I would have mentioned this earlier, but I thought it was a dead issue. Well, blow that, I'll lie. It's none of their business anyway. You can't do that. Who says? You do. You're the one that preaches openness and honesty. You can't just take the opposite view because it suits you. Oh, and you think it suits me to have my sister hooked up to a machine for the rest of her life? There'll be another donor. When? 10? 15 years from now? Try and look at it from their point of view, Patrick. It's not just HIV. But People I'm not have... sick. I've been tested three months ago and I came up negative. When you might have been in a window period. And if you had a test right now, you might be in a new window period. Ad infinitum. But we used condoms last night. How did they know that? Well, at least I know where your politics are now. You're gutless, Martin. You are gutless about William and you're gutless about this. You're a bloody hypocrite. If ideology gets hurt by the facts, it must be pretty piss-weak. Not as piss-weak as branding us as rejects. You might think that, but I don't. You're not Senator Bronwyn <laughs> Bishop, are you? Oh, what's wrong with Roman Bishop? No, he's an absolute hornback. Have to be joking. I thought you were going to be out tonight. Uh, there was a change of plan. Problem with your former patient. Now, I trust you're not going to make a habit of becoming involved with patients, Martin. Just some advice I give to all new doctors in the practice. Doesn't make for good medicine. Point taken. There's some chicken in the oven if you're hungry. Oh, thanks. I might in a minute. So, have you given any more thought to your future here with us? I thought that's what you were going to do. Yes, I did. And as I said, it's not an issue. William. Well, you're not going to be frightening the horses, are you? Not in the foreseeable future. So, uh, you'll be joining us. I'd love to. Good. Then it's settled. There isn't any chance of changing back to the other channel, is there? Every chance. <laughs> 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 <laughs>